music, hate racism. Hate racism. Yeah. We're with Andrew Robbins here in Luton, where they've just had a meeting to organize against the resurgence of extreme right anti-immigrant feelings in this country that we've, of course, expressed itself a couple of weeks ago in some of the horrible riots up in the north. Andrew, thank you for talking to us. You've been involved in this issue for many years now. Tell us how you got involved quickly and uh, you began this movement, or you were part of at least beginning the movement, Love Music, Hate Racism. Tell us about that. I've lived in Luton most of my life, uh, and I was living in the town centre in uh, around 2008. And I remember that there was a march taking place, actually in my road, outside my front door. And I went outside and it was quite intimidating. It was all white people on the march with big um, Cross of St George uh, banners walking down the street, lots of shouting. And I realised that was the early in incarnation of the EDL. Oh, uh, which was founded here in Luton, wasn't it? Which was founded sort of the next road up from where I was living at the time. <laughs> and uh, it was very intimidating, it was very frightening to see up close what, what felt to me like a sort of very intimidating uh, racist organisation, uh, fascistic organisation of people uh, coming right into the heart of Luton. Right. It's not something that I was used to seeing in Luton. Luton's a place where people of all backgrounds, ethnicities, cultures, religions, generally mix together, and get on really well. We don't really have any problems in the town. And this felt like something out of the ordinary from the outside uh, that was disrupting the peace and harmony and yeah. multicultural diversity of the town. And I thought it was important to be a part of a movement against those that seek to divide us, against the far right. Uh, and to do something that brings people together. And Love Music, Hate Racism was an organisation that I was involved in, the founding of, in Luton. Uh, and the idea was to celebrate multiculturalism, to celebrate diversity through music and through the arts. This ain't no fucking Woodstock. This is the carnival against the fucking Nazis. And the whole crowd was... sharing music, sharing the arts, sharing our cultures, so that we learn about each other, and so that we unite those that are opposed to racism and opposed to fascism through those activities. Did you have any confrontations with the, the English Defence League that began here? Love Music, Hate Racism, no, we, we didn't specifically, but we feed into the broader anti-racism movement, the broader anti-fascist movement, and... Whenever the EDL came to Luton, and they did on various occasions, to march in Luton following that initial march, we were a part of the movement against the EDL, which was led by Unite Against Fascism. Right. Uh, we fed into that, we supported right. that, uh, and we were able to provide an opposition uh, on the streets, in the press, and through leaflets and through a presence in the town to those extremists. Tell me a little bit about the economic... Uh reasons behind this, the years of the Thatcher Revolution, neoliberalism, of uh, deindustrializing the North, uh, and how that uh, is being used to stigmatize and to blame, to, uh, to scapegoat immigrants and migrants. So we've had, I mean, it must be 40 or 50 years now of a particular economic model, a neoliberal economic model, which is really, you could summarize it as a, a sort of the opposite of socialism, a sort of redistribution right. Upward, yeah. from the poor to the rich. Um, there's lots of reasons why we've moved to that model to do with profit rates, which I won't go into now, but we've, we've had this model which has really it's decimated this country in lots of different ways. Our, our services have been privatised. Taxes that we would normally have levied on the rich have been replaced by borrowing. So instead of taxing the rich, we now take loans from the rich, which we then have to pay back at interest rates. So we've got a terrible model that we've set up, uh, which is leading to austerity, it's leading to a hollowing out of the public sector, and it's leading to a, a cut of services 
which is impacting people's lives. It's making life more miserable, making life worse for this generation uh, than it was the previous generation. And people feel that. The issue is, when people have a difficulty, let's say, getting an appointment with a doctor, or you find yourself on an NHS waiting list for two years, or you can't get a house, or you can't afford the rent, uh, or you're low paid at work, where do you direct that anger? How do you explain that situation? And part of the problem is, is that groups like, well, that the mainstream uh, political class have directed people's anger towards migrants, refugees, uh, people of colour, people of non-white uh, origin, um, and use those people as a scapegoat for the problems of neoliberalism. And actually, <laughs> you know, what we're saying here is you could evict every immigrant from the country or every non-white person from the country, you're not going to get rid of the neoliberal model that we've got, uh, which is causing the problems that everyone, everyday people are facing. Uh, what we need to do is uh, target the government and those, those with power and wealth uh, and get them to change their policies, uh, stop the privatisation of our, of our industries, uh, let's start redistributing wealth from the rich to the poor. There's plenty of wealth out there. Uh, it's just not finding its way into the pockets of ordinary people. Um, and let's not blame uh, immigrants and minorities for the problem. They lost jobs too. I mean, they've been since 70s, 80s in the textile industries, for example, in West Yorkshire, they lost their jobs too. So this is uh, uh, a working class issue, not a racial issue. Well, people say. of all backgrounds are part of the working yes. class, and people of all backgrounds struggle to get appointments in the NHS. It's, it's not a problem which is limited to any particular group. The same goes for housing. Right. Uh, people of all backgrounds um, have the same poverty level of yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, benefits in this country. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we really need to uh, tackle the problem at the root, which is, um, which is our, our rulers, uh, and not turn against our fellow working class. Absolutely. Uh, and if you, if you got rid of all the immigrants tomorrow and send the boats back, they wouldn't bring back textile jobs, steel, mining, all the heavy industries that were move to cheaper labour countries. Well, of course, this is the basis of capitalism, is that capital will go where wages are cheapest. Right. Um, there's a freedom of movement for capital from one country to another, but there isn't a freedom of movement for people. No, they uh, want to stop that, regard. don't they? They want to stop that, and that's where the racism comes in. So you mentioned the, the Reform Party now got a seat in Parliament. What does this tell you? Well, it's the first time, um, probably in a hundred years or more that a party other than Labour or the Conservatives has had a significant presence in Parliament. Certainly to the right of the Conservatives, I think it's the first time in the last hundred years that any party um, has had a presence in Parliament. And that's a concern because it, it shows even under a first-past-the-post system, there is concentrated support for far-right politics, which has been brought about by the mainstream media and the mainstream political class. They've legitimised these arguments, these racist arguments, uh, and now that's leading to the inevitable outcome of, uh, in some areas, uh, the election of far-right um, politicians. And unfortunately, if Labour fails to deliver in power, which it most likely will, uh, this problem's only going to get worse. And Nigel Farage is, a, I call him Tommy Robinson in a thousand pound suit. He's very slick, and, but he's basically spouting the same racist uh, ideas, isn't he? Well, it's the same politics, um, but it's, it's dressed up in a different form. So it's not the sort of street thuggery. It's right. a more respectable uh, sort of parliamentarian approach. Yeah, and that's troubling. Um, there were no troubles here in the last couple of weeks in Luton, is that right? We've not had any problems um, yeah. in Luton in the last few weeks. As I say, we are a community that generally is well integrated. So tell us, uh, uh, you've already mentioned the media's role, I think. You see some of those headlines from the, from the mail, not from the Sun, but from the mail. Which are, uh, if somebody put together a collage of them over the and it's an extraordinary thing to behold, how incredibly overtly racist it is. So um, how, could we, how could anybody change that? How could you get to people, change their attitudes when you have a media like this? Well, there are 
two things that impact people's feelings and thoughts in life. Uh, one is the things that we read and the things that we hear in the media, the messages that we receive. Uh, that has an effect. That's a form of indoctrination or a form of education, in a sense. Um, and that, that gives you one set of ideas. But the other set of ideas comes out of your experiences. And that's the other important thing. And your real life experiences often contradict the things that you hear in the media. So what we're trying to do here through Love Music Hate Racism is create a real life experience, a coming together of people from different backgrounds. And that in itself is, it can be more powerful uh, than any sort of uh, messages in the media because we all believe what we see with our own eyes in reality. Uh, and when people from different cultures come together, uh, we feel stronger and we feel able to, to unite and uh, yeah, that's what we're trying to bring about. So tell some of the things. Last question, uh, you had a meeting to plan certain events. What have you decided to do? Some of the ideas that you're planning. Some of the ideas to are, uh, some things that we've done around the country uh, in the past are perhaps to have school assemblies mm -hmm. um, around the theme of Love Music, Hate Racism, yeah. uh, of celebrating diversity. We've also talked about holding community events involving lots of different performers yeah. from different sections of the yeah. community, an eclectic mix, if you like, mm -hmm. but bringing people together at the same time in the same place to share cultures right. um, and to learn things. Create the experience, uh, and you A say. positive experience, and it is always a positive experience when people come to together. It. There is one thing I did forget to ask you. There, some mm. people are justifying the riots by saying, or at least downplaying the racial part of it, by saying that there are these grooming gangs run by Pakistani men. They have righteous anger against that. They had a right to protest. Do you, how do you respond to that? Well, there are, there are crimes of this nature that happen in all communities. Um, I won't go into the specifics, but there are obviously lots of high-profile examples of people not from yeah. uh, the Pakistani community um, that have been involved in... Some of them in, worked at the BBC. Yeah. Made, some of them worked <laughs> at the BBC, yeah. uh, pop stars and uh, yeah. celebrities um, from all communities, um, from the white, white community and yeah. from, from a variety of different communities um, that commit crimes of this nature. You know, if they're going to talk uh, about child rape, about the system and, and the failures, then they should be talking about it um, as a whole and not just by Pakistani Muslims. There's, um, you know, majority of paedophiles are actually white males. The majority of paedophiles in this country are white men. But go to any Tommy Robinson rally and you'll come away with the impression that child abuse is somehow linked to Islam. It's not a nice subject, um, but we shouldn't be targeting any one community and saying, you know, it's specific to that yeah, community. Yeah. Um, obviously, where these issues come up, they have to be dealt with. That's a canard, isn't it? Thank you very much, Andrew, for your time. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.